back down at Olson's greenhouse right here. This place has got all the flowers for your color enjoyment and they're local to me. So we're gonna go in there and we're gonna show you some cool stuff that they've got in there. All right, so they're doing all their planting and see all the peat here? All of these pallets are peat and I saw like 500 of these out in the parking lot, full. No, that's straight compressed peat moss. And then you put your additives in after the fact, right? right. So see that? They're already getting their stuff going and we're January. This is like January 13th. There is such thing as a patching machine that when they plant seeds, they'll look at each cell here and say, well, that one's empty. So the machine will blow out the whatever's in there, the, the medium, and then it'll plant something new. But when they do that, will they all grow at the same rate? They will, yeah. right? Yeah, because it pulls it from a donor tray that was planted at the same time. Oh, a donor tray. You know, when that's all that's poking out of the seed, it'll notice that there's a certain amount of green or not. And if there's no green in the cell, if it's all brown from the soil mix, it'll blow that soil out of there and go- Oh, and, the machine will blow it out. Uh-huh, and it'll go into a donor tray and pick up one plug and plug it in there. And the whole purpose is so that, so that you can run these through a machine and not have to have somebody at the end of the machine filling in missed spots. When we transplant that end of the final pot, you wanna be able to transplant, you want every cell to have a plant. These, these three never germinated. Yes. So will you have a plugger or a, what we'll do manually is come and... We'll transplant the whole tray into the finish pack and then somebody at the oh, end will okay. stand there with a donor tray and plant them into the finish pack. So the machine will do most of the work and then we'll fill in the gaps. So we're gonna go check out the operation where they're planting the cuttings. All right, before we get over there where it's too loud, two different ways mainly that we, that we plant cuttings or stick cuttings, it's called sticking cuttings. The traditional way is by hand where you take a baggie of cuttings yes. and you stick them into soil. Sometimes you add hormone to them. So we'll see that. Okay. That's gonna be on the left-hand side. We have a whole line of people just sticking Manually. cuttings by hand okay. one at a time. Yep. Then the new way is what a machine called auto sticks. So this is where there's a cartridge. Um, when they take the cutting down in Central America or South America, wherever the mother plant originated, right at that mother plant, they'll take the cutting and they'll stick it into this cartridge that holds the cutting. Oh, instead they of a baggie, stick it in. instead of a baggie, they'll stick it, stick it into a strip that's ready to go, basically. So we'll see those strips with the plants mm -hmm. in it, but okay. they're not rooted. They're just fresh cuttings. And so this machine cuts each individual cutting out of the strip cut with a piece of degradable. Oh, okay, yeah. It's like a plastic, but it's a degradable material. And then uh, they'll take that, that little cutting with the plastic and the, the machine will plant it into the pot for us. So you can see how many more it can do per minute or per hour than our hand line over yeah. here. Holy crap. Those trays are 128. And I'll bet you it takes four minutes to plant, four to five minutes to plant 128. And if you can see, they're doing one, two, three, four, five, six trays at once. That's flipping awesome. So it's doing like, 600, 700 trays in like five minutes, folks. 10,000 cuttings per hour. That's freaking crazy. And that's a labor saver if I've ever seen one. 10,000 cuttings every hour. And how long, number of plants done? 37,000 yeah, almost. So far this day, today. Just today. Just today? Yeah. 37,000 plants done today. So this machine replaces 10 people 40 hours a week for 12 weeks. Because that's, that's, that's what we we cal calculated. That's what this saves us in labor. Who's filling up the trays with medium? We just got a new machine that's running over here. So it starts back here. They've got these bales of pre-mixed peat, and then they get a forklift, he says, and they load them into this machine right here. And then this shaves the bale. Then it comes in here all, all, comp all shaved up and then the conveyor takes it up there and loads it into the Ellie pot. So these are actually the pot that we use in propagation. So this is just a biodegradable paper and there's a glue strip right here. So the machine here wraps them around the tube and it glues them and then pulls them in like a sausage stuffer. Yes. Uh, and then they come in and then they plant them. We use these because the plants, the roots will grab onto the plastic 
uh, if we just dry fill the plot, plant. So this allows us to be able to pull the plants out even if they only have a few roots on them and it doesn't damage them. So, and then this paper degrades, uh, it has about a two to three month life in the soil and then it'll completely degrade. It's made out of a corn starchy type material. Um, this one has 18 tubes on it um, and uh, it wasn't all automated. We actually had to put each of these into the, into the cell. Now the machine oh. does it all for us. So it was cutting them and you guys yes. were putting them in by hand. So this machine we can do, two guys in one day can do what would take three guys or two guys 16 hours a day a week. Holy it's moly. Just, that's how much faster this machine runs than the other. This okay. is the hopper. Yeah. It's feeding the, the medium up in there and then you can see that coming out right there. So that thing right there, that's what glues the paper together into the cylinder. And then it comes down here, loads these trays right here. And then this white thing right here is sticking holes in it. So they come out this other side with the hole and then the machine will fill up the holes. So with this system here, how long will it take to go through one bale of the medium? Like oh, how many trays? Probably 250. How many trays per day on a, like a eight or a 10 hour shift? I'm thinking this machine, you can do about 300 an hour. Oh, 300 an hour. Yeah. With one person, you can do about 150 to 200. It depends on how fast they want to walk. Because it's made to oh. run with, because you could, what will happen is when the trays get to the last part, it'll stop and say, hey, I'm out of trays. And like the, the guy here. Oh, he's got to go and fill there. it up. So these are all hand stuck into there by hand. Yeah, right? the reason why they're not pulling them out over there is these, it's kind of got a spring-loaded action. It's got it pinches the cutting oh, to hold it in place, so it'll ruin it. So it doesn't dislodge, and they don't want to injure the cuttings. So they're just breaking them off. It's a lot easier on the plant over there. And the reason they're doing those by hand is probably because they were too tall for this machine, and it makes a mess when we try to do the taller cutting. But it takes longer than the paper to do, to biodegrade, but it still biodegrades within the year. That's cool. So that's like. It looks like plastic, folks, but it's not. But biodegradable cornstarch, something or other. This you guys would have gotten shipped to you yesterday or today. Yeah, right? probably today, yeah. Today. Uh -huh. So these were cut like maybe two days ago or a day? Yesterday? Probably yesterday. Usually two days. El Salvador. And that what is it? From... What is it? That's Aloha. It's a Calibracoa. So with this setup here, they're sticking these by hand. Looks to me like they're starting out over here. And he's putting the trays onto this conveyor belt. And they're feeding through here. It looks like he's wa they're watering it. We're only sticking by, by hand per a certain crop. You're right. Okay, right. okay. Either things that don't go as well into the auto sticks cartridge or Sometimes it comes from a supplier that doesn't support that technology. Yes. That's how they come in a baggie and then so ship it over. Does it say overnight. how many there are in there? There's usually a hundred. A hundred and five? Yeah. So this is a perennial from Duman, produced in Guatemala. They'll fill them into the baggies. They'll put the tag with the variety name. And then we'll take a baggie over to here. And the watered in trays come in the top. They'll pull one down to their station and they'll manually fill it in until it's full and then they'll set it on the finish belt once they're done filling the tray. So that's such a cool operation to see that. And that was one thing I didn't, I didn't get to see the last time that I was here. But so this is early January or mid January and then these will be ready to go in March or April. So all these racks will be full and these are what goes out to the stores. Fill these all up, ship them out. So over here, these guys are potting up. So they're taking some of the plugs and they're potting them up by hand. So you can see here, the expert gardener, that's a Walmart thing. These are perennials. It looks like it's a Vinca uh, ground cover or something like that. He was talking about that earlier, but so that is gonna go to Walmart. So it looks to me like what they're doing is they bring the rooted uh, cuttings into there. They're all rooted he dumps them out into that little tray there and you can see he's manually sticking them into these pots once that's done it goes through this station gets watered 
gets onto the tray and moves out to the next greenhouse to sit and bake and grow. So all these beautiful plants, they will go out into, into the world for us guys on the local level to make our yards look awesome. And it all kind of happens here and in facilities like this. So I just want to thank you for allowing yeah. me to come down yeah. to see your operation and I appreciate it. Thanks for coming to yeah. Olson's Greenhouse. We'll see you later. Yep. And we'll see you guys in the next one. This is a Dosatron unit. It's an automatic fertilizer injector and this is what I need for my annuals, folks. Got you, put, you mix up your base solution here and then you got your incoming fresh water and then it injects fertilizer and then comes out the other end and then you can use it as a wand to fertilize your flowers or you can hook it up to say a drip system or even better hook it up to the lawn sprinklers and sprinkle the whole lawn with this fertilizer I need that this year I'm thinking maybe we gotta head down this road but these things are probably oh somewhere between three and six hundred dollars I'm guessing would you want something like that at your house I, I would but I'm not gonna you're not crazy enough. I'm not gonna spend the money on it he's not crazy enough to... I use an ortho hose end sprayer and it's the same thing you just have to mix more and more often you just use the heavier heavier solution yeah you can dial up your ratio and, and how often are you fertilizing your personal garden my goal annual. is to do it every two weeks, but I end up doing it maybe once, once a, a year. <laughs> he's once a year! He's once a year! Every two weeks and he's once a year? I'm like every other watering, folks. That's the, that's the goal, but sometimes it's like every third watering or fifth or tenth. But he's like once a year, I'm like every ten. I get it twice sometimes in a good year. <laughs> that's I'll good. That's better than nothing. Most people do zero. But I put a lot of compost in to begin with, so there's nutrients Every there. year you're doing the uh -huh. compost? Yeah, yeah. And that's key, and that's, I need to do more, so yeah. more of that. This is what I need in my shed, folks. See this? I need this kind of heating going on in my shed. Is that shed ever gonna be anything, or yeah. is it just a storage room? It's a storage room for now. <laughs> to a place where you can go when yeah. she kicks you out? Yeah, <laughs> well, like, I want it to, I want it, I want it to be, a, I want it to be like a man cave. Do you? Yeah. No. I would like to have it a man cave because I already am out there just chilling. I'm working, it's chilling. Already, he's got the video running, so it's, it's all on tape now. Yeah. <laughs> See? You tell him. Yeah, the secrets are coming out. It was supposed to be to grow plants.